Okay, let's keep looking at examples of graphing polar equations. The pattern is always that we um, graph r as a function of theta. This sort of provides us an instruction set. Remember the, the angle theta, this is theta on this axis, the angle theta will determine which direction we face, and um, r will determine how far out we walk. So let's see, again we have r is a function of theta. It's maybe a little bit complicated, it's the square root, but in order to draw this graph, I'm going to draw the graph of sine 2 theta first. Now sine 2 theta is moving faster than regular sine, so instead of um, taking 2 pi to go all the way around, sine 2 theta actually will do everything within pi. So by pi, it's going to have done a complete cycle. So I'll take that and divide it in half. There's a half pi. Um, here's 3 pi fourths and here is pi force, and we'll just draw the graph of sine first. Sine starts out at zero, goes to one, um, back to zero, down to negative one, and then back up. Now if it was just sine two theta, we would just draw your usual sine curve here. The only difference with using um, the square root is that instead of having, um, what happens when we take the square root of a small number is it actually gets bigger. Now the square root of zero is zero, right? And the square root of one is one. So these are points on the square root of sine two theta. The regular sine would kind of come up like this, and if you take the square root of these small numbers though, they get bigger. Just think about the square root of one fourth, right? The square root of one fourth is actually bigger. It's one half and so on. So what's gonna happen is this is just gonna kind of plump out the graph here. So the graph's just gonna get kind of elevated here. Well, that's probably a little extreme, but still, this is really just sine of 2 theta. Now, we should go all the way around here. So let me, there's there's 2 pi, there's 3 pi halves, um, here's 5 pi fourths, and here's, uh, let's see, 3 pi halves, here's 7 pi fourths. So the graph is gonna gonna go through another cycle do this. Oh, there's something I forgot. Okay, so this, by taking the square, it plumps things out. Also, it actually eliminates this part of the graph because the square root of a negative doesn't exist. Huh? So our graph actually consists of um, basically these two little hills, right? There's this one and this other. And they're just, just because of the square root, they're just kind of lifted a little bit higher than the normal sine graph would be. Okay, well, let's see what we get when we draw this graph. Remember we're starting here facing a direction of zero. You could think about this as you're facing east, right? By the time you get to pi halves, you're facing north. By the time you get to an angle of pi, you're facing west. And um, by the time you get to three, three pi halves, you're facing south. And at two pi halves, you're facing east again. If that helps you think about the direction you're facing. Here we're interpreting those kind of as compass points, right? So Straight up here would be north, this is east, this is west, and that's south. Okay, so facing east, we have a radius of zero. So basically, we're at the origin. You can see when we're facing north, we're going to be back at the origin again. So that means this is going to create a loop, right? As we turn from east to north, we, we can walk out further and further and further, and then less and less and less until we're back at the origin again. We walk out our maximal distance at pi force. At pi force, we get to take a full step out. So pi force is this direction, that's northeast. We take a full step out, which according to my scale is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, so this has gotta be one there. Okay, so this is gonna create, as we turn from east to, to northeast, we can walk out further and further and further. But then as we continue on, turning from northeast to north, we can walk out less and less and less. So it makes a little leaf here. Oops, I kind of missed, but it comes down there. Okay. Um, then, as we turn from north to west, we don't see anything because the graph doesn't exist. The square root of a negative is not real. So as we turn along here, there's nothing that we see. Till finally, when we, we are facing west again, now as we turn from west to south, so we're, we're turning from west to south, we initially have a radius of zero. So when we're facing due west, we don't walk out at all. But when we're facing five pi force, we can actually walk out a full step. So there's a full step back here when we're facing five pi force. And then when we're facing south, we can't walk out again. So 
as we turn, we can walk out further and further and further, but then less and less and less once we get past 5 pi fourths until by the time we're facing south, we can't walk out um, at all. So we get a similar shape over here. See how those, those two, uh, those two uh, places where we start at the origin and then the radius gets bigger and then gets smaller and it's back to the origin, that's going to be, you're at the origin, you're back at the origin, this is going to create a loop, or maybe you could call it a leaf, like the boundary of a leaf in the graph. Notice this graph has a symmetry as well. If you turn this graph 180 degrees, then it's going to have a symmetry. So how could, we, how could we tell from the equation that that symmetry was going to be there? Well, if you think about a graph that has this kind of symmetry, if it has 180 degree symmetry, if it has a point here, r theta, that makes the equation true, then there's got to be a point 180 degrees over on the opposite side. Like this, right? Now, what would the, if the coordinates of this point are r theta, how could you characterize the coordinates of this point? Well, a couple ways. One would be to face the same angle and just walk backwards. That would get you to this place, right? So if your equation can't tell the difference between r theta and minus r theta, then, um, then you know you have that symmetry. But that's not the only way you could characterize this point. Another way you could characterize it is you're still walking out the same distance, but you're turning another 180 degrees or another pi radians to get to that point. So these are two characterizations of this point in terms of that one. Now there are other characterizations, but if you have, these are some easy ones. If you happen to notice that your function can't tell the difference between r theta and minus r theta, or it can't tell the difference between r theta and r theta plus pi, then you know it's going to have symmetry around the origin. Let's look how that's true in this equation. In this equation, suppose that you have r and theta that satisfy this equation, and you try to plug in theta plus pi. So um, the sine of 2 times the angle theta plus pi is equal to the sine of 2 theta plus 2 pi. Well, we know that the period of sine is 2 pi, so if you throw an extra 2 pi in there, it's not going to tell a difference. Or you could use the angle sum formula to see that. Um, this is that you get the sine of the first times the cosine of the second, which is 2 pi, um, plus the first, plus the cosine of the first, that's the cosine of 2 theta, times the sine of 2 pi. But the sine of 2 pi is 0, right? So a cosine of 2 pi is, is 1. And so this is sine 2 theta. So you, the function can't tell the difference between theta and theta plus pi. So if you plug in theta plus pi, it, it thinks that you're taking the sine of theta. So that means if r theta is a point on the graph. So if, r, if the values of r and theta are such that they satisfy then r theta plus pi is also a point. And that means that if there's any point over here, the corresponding point on the other side, 180 degrees around, right, um, is going to also satisfy the equation, so it's going to have to be a point on the graph. That guarantees that the graph has this origin symmetry where you can rotate it 180 degrees around the origin and it still looks the same. This, this then is the characterization of what it means to have origin symmetry. If you have a function with origin symmetry, um, if r theta lies on the graph, then the point minus r theta, r theta plus pi, also lies on the graph.